Hello, good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are about to start. We are going just to wait a little bit okay. just for the rest to connect. Uh, did you practice a little bit your reading skills or anything during the day or yesterday? Today I was practicing in the platform, mm -hmm. but, it, but it was very, very difficult because there were, there were many words that I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so you have to increase your vocabulary. Yes. Okay, yes. but did you uh, finish all the exercises in the platform? I finished the section one only. Okay, just a second. Yeah, okay, that's good because that is the one uh, for this week, right? So, but you said that you have some difficulties. Kind of because it was very, uh, for example, it, it was one, one, one exercise that was talking about, uh, uh, I think it was a beard, but they say it's a se seal or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand the, the paragraph, the complete paragraph. I only have an idea what they were talking about. Okay, I understand. Yeah, because that actually that's the problem, right? That sometimes you, you have the idea, but some keywords probably they can confuse you, right? Or yes. Something like that, like, or it's not very clear. So, yeah, we are going to practice again today. I guess that we have three practices because yesterday we only did one, right? And what do you think about that practice? It was useful. How many did you did you score? I scored seven because it was kind of uh, easy because the, the 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 word was highlighted. Yes, the word was highlighted also, and yeah. it was kind of easy, right, to recognize. Yeah, it was, to it was recognize. like synonyms. Yes, exactly. So uh, today we are going just to talk about a uh, rhetorical questions that they are kind of uh, difficult because you need to understand what the what the author is trying to say and also the we are going to practice with negative factual information questions and factual information questions um, those are the ones that are explained in the platform I don't know if you yes. review the information there yes I review Okay, perfect. So we are going to review a little bit of that information today, and we are going to to give you like this kind of practices. So we are just going to wait for the rest. And at the end of this week, I will send you the information to the group, okay? So you can also keep on practicing. Yeah, so that's good. You didn't have any question about um, the platform, right? No, the, about the platform, no. Uh, it, it was only the, the 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 new words that I don't know. There are many <laughs> new words. Yeah, exactly. Because this is like academic language and everything. So, yes, it's kind of complicated. It's not that like advanced, but it's very technical, like very technical or a specific information that you are shown there. But you're not going to take the test very soon or... Are you going to no, take it? I'm not going to take the test soon. So uh, I think I, uh, but I, 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 I always have wanted to take it. And it was interesting to know what is about the test is about. Yes, because actually you have an idea and probably you will be able to, probably if you decide to take it, right? You can prepare yeah. yourself with time. You can review. <laughs> you can review everything. And then you have an idea and you are more relaxed. But yes. some people don't know, right? Some people, they just think that it's like a regular exam or a very difficult exam. But actually, it's not that difficult if you prepare yourself. I think this is very good for me because I don't know many words. I have to, to, to learn more words. I only, I think I am in an intermediate level because I know a limited uh, qu uh, quantity of words. And I don't, I don't learn more. <laughs> yes, exactly. But it is normal because we don't use a lot of words like in our daily basis, right? Like uh, we don't cook or we don't work using English or 
anything like that. So it's normal like that. And that's why we give you these kind of tips, right? For you to, to have like some techniques so you can improve your vocabulary. Yeah. So I guess everybody's joining right now. Good evening, Marielos. Good evening, Katia, Miguel, yeah. Milton. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your... Good evening. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for your efforts. So we were talking about the TOEFL and also the practices. I didn't know if you have practice with the platform today. Did you finish it? The section one? I only worked uh, before the test. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have the test is, is no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Try to try. Yes, section one is the most uh, the most important right now for this week. So try to review the information and try to finish it. And if you have any questions, you can let me know in in the group, right? So we are going to, as I was saying, uh, or I was saying to Maritza that we are going to uh, review a little bit of that information about the paragraph or the information that is in the platform. And then we are going to provide you more information about uh, or uh, the practices that we were doing yesterday. So that's what we are going to do today. Yesterday, we did only one practice. So today we are going to have the practice that was missing to the yesterday and also today's practices that we are going to talk about the, about the questions that are shown in the platform. So thank you for coming, everybody. Milton, Lady, Sara Martinez, now we are going to, that's the reason why I provided you at the beginning of the class or in the first class, some of the tips that you can use and you will be able to use them right now. Uh, today, we are going to start with the practice of rhetorical purpose questions, okay? So yesterday we were uh, seeing some examples, right? So in these kind of questions, we always see this kind of statements, purpose statements, to support, to explain, to compare, to prove, to criticize, to contrast, and to define. And we need to locate the phrase in the passage, right? So we need to um, understand or we need to read all of it, and we need to check which uh, is the correct one, right? So um, the rhetorical purpose question is just to it's talking about that that the paragraph is going to persuade you to take one of the questions, the correct one. So you need to pay attention in the keywords and about what is talking or the questions. What why are they why I are they asking you, right? So um you just need to check that. Yesterday we did these exercises. Do you remember this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So we are going to practice right now with the rhetorical questions. Rhetoric, uh, rhetorical questions, they take around, let's see here, 90 seconds. So you need to answer rhetorical questions in 90 seconds. So that will be one minute and 30 seconds, right? Do you think that you will have enough time to answer them? Yes, right. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So remember that rhetorical questions are like this, like in paragraph, paragraph six, the author discusses or why does the author mention? So you need to interpret what the author is trying to say, right? By the information that you are going to read. So every, every, every 90 seconds, I'm going to uh, ask you if you have finished and I'm going to continue with the next question, the rhetorical question. So we are going to start like that. Let me see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight people right now. Probably if they, uh, other students um, come late, probably they, they will be able to join, right? So let me share right now the first question and let me set up my timer. Are you ready? Yes, teacher. Yes, yes, yes teacher. right. Perfect. <laughs> Just one minute, please. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen right now. And we are going to start. 
I just want you to check to see all of it. So. Okay, are you able to see the screen? Are, are you able to read it? Yes. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So we're going to start with uh, the nature of astronomy, okay? This will be the number one, okay? I'm going to write it here because I forget them at the end. So number one, you can start right now. Go ahead. Letter B. Letter B. Okay. If you believe it's letter B. Write it, write it to say, uh, you can write a uh, nature of astronomy, letter B, okay? And at the end, uh, we are going to give you the answers, okay? Voy a aumentarlo, teacher. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're going to stop. Now choose one of the answers, okay? Choose one of the answers. And at the end, we are going to give you the answers. We are going to... We are going to do just 10 of them, okay? So the number one is nature of astronomy. Now choose A, B, C, or D. Now we are going to go with number two. This one is kind of long. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, sorry. So you will be able to read it all of it. This is kind of long. Are you able to read it? Yes, teacher. Okay. So you can start right now. Okay, time to choose one, okay? Choose one option. And we are going to start with the next one. Okay, number three is types of mixtures. Types of mixtures. Go ahead and start reading, please. Okay. 
Okay, welcome everybody. Right now we are reading and we are working with rhetorical questions, okay? So you can start practicing if you just join the class. Comunidades en Okay, try to choose one, and we are going to continue with number four, okay? Okay, now next one. Number four is atomic theory through the 19th century. So this is related with paragraph one. Sir, can you ask to the rest of uh, our classmates? Because I can listen an interruption and interrupt me. Yes, please mute your microphones right now that you're reading. Mute your microphones so we don't have any, any distraction, okay? Letter C. Okay, you think that is letter C, write it. And now we are going to go with number five. Okay, choose one right now, choose one. And we're going to go with number five. Number five is in the internal compartments of the human body. So you have it there. Okay, 
Okay, choose one. Choose one. And we are going to start with number six. Okay, ready? Okay. Yes. This is number six, the invention of the X-ray. Okay, choose one. And we are going to go with number seven, okay? Choose one. Okay, ready? Now we're going to go with number seven. This is the process of scientific research. So you need to read the first paragraph, sorry. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. So you can read all the options. Okay, you can go ahead, start. Okay, choose one. Choose the one you think it is correct. And now we are going to go with number eight. Number eight is adapt adaptive function of sleep. Now we are going to go with paragraph three. Okay, you can start reading. Okay, 
Okay, choose one. Choose one. And now we are going to go to number nine. Number nine. The, Saf the Sapir Wharf hypothesis. This is short. So go ahead. Okay, choose one, and we are going to read the last one. Choose the one you think it is correct. Yes. C. Letter C, okay. So write it down if you believe it is the C, or if it is the A or B. And the last one is feudal societies. Feudal societies. Feudal society, feudal society. Remember to mute your microphones, okay? Okay, choose the one you think it is correct. Either me. Okay, if you believe that is letter B, now mm -hmm. we are going to uh, answer all of the questions, okay? How do you feel? It was okay. difficult, it was easy. <laughs> easy, right? It was really mm -hmm. easy. It's, it's <laughs> Kind of difficult, kind of difficult. Yeah, okay, difficult. Those, yeah. these are these are our uh, rhetorical purpose questions. So the purpose is to understand why what the author is trying to say, right? All of these, when if you see this, why does the author say is a rhetorical uh -huh. purpose yeah. question. Okay. So we are going to go to number one, which was nature of astronomy. Just let me check here. Allow me one moment, please. Here. Nature of astronomy. 
So the question was, uh, why does the author say, for example, the universe made the carbon, the calcium, and the oxygen necessary to construct something as interesting and complicated as you? So we have letter A, B, C, D. Which one letter is the B. correct one? Letter B. Letter, letter B. B. To yeah, explain B. why the universe evolves so much over long periods of time. Remember to look for keywords, right? Keywords, adjectives. So it says, for example, the universe made carbon calcium and the oxygen necessary to construct something as interesting and as complicated as you. So actually, in this case, the answer is A. A, letter A, to explain one way in which the universe has evolved significantly over the great lengths of time. Why? A letter A is the correct answer because the specific example is directly preceded by a broad statement about how the universe changes. So it says here, uh. um, in considering the history of the universe, we will see again and again the cosmos evolves, it changes in profound ways over long periods of time. So this is the main idea, right? It's introducing the main idea. And to support the main idea is the second one, right? So even though letter B, letter B is describing, right? Describing how or explaining how the universe evolves, but this one is not explaining how the universe evolves, right? So it is saying how it is uh, how it evolves, but it knows, it's not describing, right? Like the long periods of time is not saying that. So we have to pay attention in that. Let's see number two, Europa, a moon with an ocean. It is, in this one says in paragraph five, the author mentioned class up photos of Europa. In this one, paragraph one, Europa. Yes, in this one, yes, outer planets, the most probable colors. Okay, perfect. So what is the best option in this one, A, B, C, or D? But it says in paragraph 5, teacher. Sorry? Yes. It says in paragraph 5, and you say paragraph Oh, sorry, paragraph, paragraph five. 5, sorry, yes. sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, for that reason, I was not finding the, <laughs> the photos. It's here. When we look at close-up photos of Europa, we see a strange, complicated surface. For the most part, the icy crust is extremely smooth, but it is crisscrossed with cracks and low ridges that often stretch 4,000 of kilometers. So which one is the correct one? Letter A, <coughs> A, B, C, or D? Identify, explain, I show. I think it's letter D. You yeah, think it's letter, letter D, letter C? Letter D. Letter D. Letter D. Letter D, correct, is letter D. It's correct because features of the surface of Europa are described immediately following this, since the passage is about the surface and appearance of Europa, right? So here is saying, explain how astronomers know what Europa looks like. So if you can see, it is describing how it looks, right? right? Yeah. Next one, types of mixture, number three. It says, why does the author say note that the composition of a sports drink can vary? It could be made with somewhat more or less sugar, flavoring or other components and still be sports drink. Letter A, B, C, or D? B? Um, who's, say, who, who's saying B? Maritza? I, I say B. Okay, Miguel Angel also. It's yeah. correct, it's letter B, to make it clear that sports drinks are still homogeneous solution despite the various compositions because it's talking about here, the <laughs> flavor, sugar, components. So it's still be sport drinks, right? Still be sports drinks. Very good, perfect. Mm -hmm. Number four, atomic theory through the 19th century. In paragraph one, why does the author mention the scientists of their day? And it says here, the earliest recorded discussion of the basic structure of a matter comes from an ancient Greek philosophers, the scientists of their day. It's letter A, B, C, or D? 
Letter C. Letter C. I think it's letter D. <laughs> letter D. Let's see. I think it's letter A. Who says letter A? Me, Irena. Irena Hernandez. Yes. Okay, you have one point. Yes, exactly. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Really <good>. Finally. <laughs> it's, it's correct because the topic is scientific one, right? So atomic theory, it says here that ph philosophers don't typically or especially nowadays discuss or deal with scientific theories or topics. But the author was explaining that although they are considered philosophers in our time, they were also scientists in their time. So they were talking about scientists here. The scientists of their day, los científicos de sus días, ¿verdad? De eso estaba hablando. Okay, let's see. This is the human body, number five, right? The internal compartments of the human body. And it says, why does the author say yet these bacteria are outside the body and cannot be allowed to circulate freely inside the body? Letter A, B, C, or D? B, letter D. B. D as in David or B as in boy? B, B. B. letter B. B as letter in boy. B. To explain why certain bacteria outside the body cannot be allowed to circulate through inside. I think okay. it's letter A too. Letter you D. think it's letter A? Because <laughs> everybody's letter A, I letter C, see. letter B. Letter C. No, For, letter D. Uh, for oh this one is name. letter C. Oh. C okay. is the correct answer because option A is incorrect because as it was mentioned previously in the passages, uh, the statement does not explain why bacteria mm -hmm. are not allowed to circulate inside the butter, body. And B, uh, also finally, the statement does not show contrast between types or compartments. So this is incorrect also. So the correct answer is C, to illustrate, right? the compartments within the human body. Let's see six, invention of the x-ray. This was kind of short. So why does the author say mysterious and invisible ray? A, B, C, or D? It was at the beginning, right? D. D, to D. introduce technology that remains a mystery today. In this one, Letter E. A. Letter D. Letter B. Letter B. Exactly. Letter B. B as in boy, right? Yes. Exactly. It's, it's correct because the technology was not fully understood at the time, which is stated er earlier in the passage. So the sentence behind it was unknown, and thus the author refers to it as mysterious. So why that's why it was mysterious because they didn't understand it very well. And let's see number, this is number six. Now we are going to number seven. The process of scientific research. It says here in paragraph one, what is the function of the phrase like inhaling and exhaling? A, B, C, or D? A. A. A, letter A. Letter B. A. 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 Letter A, are you sure? B. B. Yes, A. Let's see. And this one is letter A. Exactly. Oh. Very good. <laughs> one point for you. Yeah. It's correct wow. because just as inhaling and exhaling are both necessary, so uh, these are types of mm -hmm. reasoning within the scientific process, as the author explains just prior to this sentence. So you, we, need, we need to read yeah. uh, the previous sentence also, right? Good point. Uh, next one, adaptive function of sleep. This was, was in the paragraph three. The author mentioned, not surprisingly, insomnia treatment may take one of several different approaches in order to A, B, C, or D. A, letter C. D. It's letter, letter D. Letter, letter D. C. No, it's uh, the, the correct answer is A. Uh, it's correct because the sentence. Three points. In, <laughs> three points. <laughs> the sentence immediately preceding this one explains the various causes 
of insomnia. So the author then goes uh, on to explain different treatments options. So uh, it's correct because it explains, right, the various treatments of insomnia. So you can see here more examples, right? This letter A. I am punctual, teacher. Poncha, ponchada. <laughs> yes. Okay, but let's wait, let's wait, let's wait for the, the, the other ones. Let's see. So the sapir worth hypothesis, this, this was a short one. Uh, what is the correct, what, why does the author say the hypothesis argues? A, B, C, or D? B. C. C. Letter C. Letter C. Letter C. Okay, letter C is to show the linguistic relativity is simply a hypothesis. So is correct the letter C. Yes, it's correct because the author uses this short phrase, the hypothesis argues. And this emphasizes that this is a hypothesis also called linguistic relativity. It's just a claim not necessarily proven or agreed upon. So letter C is correct. So oh. let's see. And the last one, feudal societies. In paragraph two, why does the author say power was handed down through family lines? Letter C. Letter C. Letter B. Okay, who chose letter C? Letter B. C. Letter C. B. 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 And letter B. Okay, it says uh, the power was handed down through family lines with peasant families, serving lords for generations and generations. Letter so D. it's letter D. Letter A. D. It's letter D, exactly, to explain how the oh, system okay. works and why peasants stay poor for generations. And this is because of this, right, through family lines with peasant families serving lords for generations and generations. So that's why they stay poor, right? Because they were serving generations and generations and and the family lanes uh, protect oh, their... Okay. Yes, exactly. That was the, the, the letter D. That's why the, that's the answer. How do you feel this practice? Como se enteran la practica? Very hard. Very, very difficult. Very mentally. It's so kind of difficult. In my case, in some words, I only I had a, a doubt because in some words, I, 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 I know the thing, the meaning. The meaning. And some of, some of the words you didn't know the meaning, right? It was kind of complicated, right? Yes, for me too. Yes, in my but this... Case, hi, three, in, my, in my case, three, seven, eight, nine, correct. Nine, correct? Four, correct. Four, nine. correct. Oh, okay, but that, that was good, kind of right. You were on your way. You were on your way. No. <laughs> you were, you were. Who, got, who got more than four? Who got five? No, I, I have only yeah, three points. Don't ask too much. Don't ask. Okay, who got one? Who got one? One correct. Everybody. Everybody. You got one. Okay, very good. Now, you see, you just need to practice a little bit more. And I will give you uh, these uh, exercises for you to practice more, okay? But we are going to here. Oh, well, okay, somebody, hey, somebody's watching TV right, right now. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me see right now. Okay. Now, now we're going to talk about the information that is in the platform, okay? Have you checked the platform? Yes. 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 yes, right. So we are going to talk about negative factual information questions and factual information questions. You, you don't have to be like, oh, my God, I, I, I don't know English or anything like that. We are practicing just for TOEFL. TOEFL is kind of tough because it's tricky and because it's kind of complicated the language, right? But mm -hmm. if you practice, you're going to get used to it, okay? 
So in the platform, we have this information. It says negative factual information questions ask you to recognize information that is explicitly stated in the text. So major ideas, supporting details or definitions. So um, negative factual information are kind of difficult because they will give you like three or four options and you need to know the incorrect one, the one that is not there. So you just, you, you need to choose what is the incorrect one or the false statement. So you need to read a lot, right? You need to read the whole paragraph, understand it, and then say, this one is there, this one is there, this one is there, and this one is not there. So I believe that this is incorrect. So for negative factual information questions, look for the words not or except in capital letters. Keep this tip in mind. You're looking for an answer that either isn't in the paragraph or directly contradicts information in the paragraph. So you can be either or, right? And I guess that you already checked this example, right? You already know the answer for this one, right? For example, it says here, according to the passage, all of the following are risks in sports, except false storms, accidents, or avalanches. And uh, in the platform, we can see here that it mentions mountaineers' falls, avalanches, and in this line, it's talking about all of those who organize sports, formulate their rules in a way to minimize the risk of injury and to ensure that medical assistance is readily available. So this is like describing accidents, right? So which is yes. the correct one? Storms. The the storms. storms. The storm. so if we read everything, we can find falls, we can find uh, accidents, and we can have, we can find avalanches, but storms, storms is not mentioned. So that is the, the one that we need to choose. This one, right? Storms. So that's how you try to understand these questions. And we have factual information questions. They ask you to recognize information that is explicitly stated in the text, like major ideas, supporting details, definitions, right? And for factual information questions, you need to pay attention, like phrases like according to the paragraph or paragraph, these answers, which of the following? So don't automatically select an answer just because it contains words or phrases from the paragraph. Make sure you carefully evaluate each option to determine if it is correct. So you need to check, you need to read, you need to make sure the one that you are going to select and you need to, um, you need to omit the other ones, right? And this is another example, right? According to the passion, passage, what problem, sorry. It's, that it's not working here. What problem did Daguerre encounter? His pictures were all negative images. He could not find a way to make positive images. His positive images will darken or he could not reverse the fixed image. And here we have uh, the, the answers, right? So in all of this, it's saying color film is made from layers of chemicals that are sensitive to red, green, and blue light from which all of the color, colors can be made. So in this case, letter C is the correct one because it's in the eighth line and his positives, uh, positive images will darken, right? So that is what is telling us in this case, like we need to read and we need to, according to the passage, we need to um, understand the best option, the best possible option. So. That is kind of difficult also because of the vocabulary and everything, but we need to practice, right? We just need to practice that. Okay, identify information. Oh, inference questions. We are going to um, practice inference questions tomorrow because tomorrow uh, we will have classes if you didn't know because we in Monday we didn't have because of the storm, right? So tomorrow we will have classes also and we are going to practice inference questions to identify information or comprehend an idea that is not plainly stated in the reading passage. These questions are kind of difficult because it is not there. Actually, the, the answer is there, but it, the, the, the words are not there. You need to infer that. You need to create your own thought about that, okay? So that's why it's kind of difficult, these kind of questions. 
They usually include the words imply, infer, and suggest. And this is information about rhetorical purpose questions, right? Are similar because they also ask for information not plainly stated, and they will ask why the author has presented a particular piece of information. Remember to eliminate, eliminate wrong answers that will help you, right? And then you can choose the correct one. And this is one example, right? It can be inferred from passage that, and you need to read the, the passage and you need to, we are going to talk about more about these inference questions tomorrow, okay? This will be for tomorrow. Um, we almost finished. We have uh, like around 10 minutes. I don't know if you would like to uh, do like one or two or three questions. I guess that we have, we, we have time like for about like two or three questions, but I don't know which one would you like to practice. I guess that any will be good for you to practice, right? Or I don't know if you would like to see another example of inference questions or rhetorical questions or uh, negative. This one's like negative factual questions or any of them? Maybe inference teacher. Inference, okay. Inference. Okay, I will give you this information today and tomorrow we are going to keep on practicing. So, because I will give you this and tomorrow we are going to review it, okay? So no problem. Okay. So, in these uh, inference questions, you will be able to define what an inference is and how it will look on TOEFL. You will be able to avoid making the same common mistake as most other TOEFL takers when answering inference questions, and you will be able to use misunderstanding of modifiers and conditions to identify the correct answer. So first of all, you need to uh, work on your strategy, right? You need to think first about your own strategy and compare it to my own, um, you can, uh, if, if this works for you, if this um, information works for you, okay. But if you have any other way to answer the question, you can use it, okay. So uh, number six, it says, what can be inferred from paragraph five about the workers in Taylor's theory? So in this case, we need to read the whole paragraph uh, to know what to answer, right? For example, workers, were more tired on the job prior to implementary work test. His theory showed that workers were inherently lazy. Many condemned Taylor because he was unsympathetic to workers or Taylor's theory was later disproved by other psychologists. So we need to read all of it and then we need to infer what, what is uh, the answer. So inferring questions, we have all of the uh, questions here. Infl inference questions includes the words infer, imply, or suggest. So it is, is it is not going to be here literally. We need to understand what is trying to say the whole thing, right? What is inference? An inference is a conclusion reached based on evidence and reasoning. Inference and author's purpose questions are not directly stated in the passage. You see, they are not directly stated in the passage. How can we infer something? For example, if you look out the window and you notice that it's cloudy, or it's clouds in the sky, you can take an umbrella because you guess it might rain. So you are inferring something there, right? Also, if you're speaking about your problems at work to a friend and he yawns, you stop talking about your work and instead of ask about his life, right? So you infer that this person is getting boring, right? So you can, you, uh, you do inferences during all of your days. Right? Inference example, she almost always comes to work on time. What can we infer in this sentence? That she arrived late. That she arrives oh, late or oh, sometimes, right? Sometimes because she almost always, you need to see the, the words, right? Almost always, almost always comes to work on time. Okay. So sometimes. Yes. Sometimes, like few times, she, she, arrive late. she arrives late, exactly. So she sometimes comes to work late. So she is a reliable employee. That is another thing that we can infer. 
it is not saying that it's a reliable employee, but it's saying that she almost always is on time, right? So uh, we can trust her. Okay. So that is an inference. We have another sentence here. A, an area of land is considered a desert if it receives less than four inches of annual rainfall. What can we infer in this sentence? What can we say about this? An area of land is considered a desert if it receives less than four inches of annual rainfall. So we can that, feel that, that even that even in a in a desert, you could find uh, rain. Yeah, probably, probably it's not stated there, but probably in a year, probably very randomly, you can find rain, right? So also an inference we can be areas that receive more then four inches are not deserts, right? So deserts are the ones that receive less than four inches. And if an area doesn't receive or, or receives more than four inches, it's not a desert. Mm -hmm. So that is something that is saying that, right? Very good, Sergio, very good. So let's see. So you make inferences every day. So do the same with some of the information you read in the TOEFL passages how to make an inference. We need to analyze the modifier. Modifiers are really important, right? We already talked about this. What is a modifier? They are adjectives or adverbs, right? So a word or phrase that supplies additional information about another word or phrase. So keep it simple. For example, the big dog, a modifier is big, right? Adverbs like run quickly. How do you run? Quickly, right? Popular modifiers on TOEFL, extreme modifiers, for example, all, always, never, only. It's not the same if I say all the time, I'm tired all the time, than saying uh, I'm never tired or sometimes. Sometimes I am tired, right? So it's not the same. So you need to check for modifiers. <laughs> Frequency modifiers, usually, sometimes, almost always. Degree modifiers also, some, most, almost all and time modifier, dozen, century, and millennium. These are not adjectives, and these are not uh, adverbs, they are nouns, but also they can uh, trick you in the TOEFL, right? The numbers, right? Millennium, century, dozen. And inference with modifiers. For example, if I see a sentence that says, it's one of the biggest buildings in the world, one inference can be there are bigger buildings, right? It's one of the biggest, but it's not the only one. For example, if I say he owned most of the land, so I can infer that there is some land that he didn't own, right? So he owned most of it, but not all of it. There are 500 non-butterfly species. For example, known is telling me that there are non-butterfly species, right? Something that we don't know. If I read, this is the best TOEFL course. This is the best. So I can say that this is the best, but there are other, other TOEFL courses that are poorer or they don't have the same quality. And another one, there is usually enough snow to go skiing in December. So sometimes there is not enough snow in December for skiing. So we can infer that by reading these sentences. Do you have questions right now? No? no? Okay, perfect, perfect. Because it's time to stop the class. You see, the class goes really fast, right? So tomorrow, if you want to, we can practice with experience questions, okay? So we are going to stop today. We are going to review this information um, tomorrow. And we are going to continue with experience questions, okay? And at the Digo, end of si it, sorry, someone is applying at the I can hear you. No one is. I can't can hear you. Someone, mute your microphones, okay. please. <laughs> mute, your, mute your microphones because we're about to finish the class. Tomorrow, I will give you uh, this information, okay? After the class or Saturday, probably I will send you all of this information and also the book that I was using for you to practice more if you want Thank to keep you. on practicing. And on Monday, we are going to start with which skill? With 
listening, right? So we are going to listen and listen and listen different things. So don't get frustrated. We are learning. We're here to learn and to practice, okay? So okay. thank you for coming okay, and have teacher. a nice evening. Okay. Bye, Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night. Take care.